Today we're going to be talking about continuous growth. I have a problem up here. Um, it says determine the interest generated on the $1 deposited in an account at the very high interest rate of 100% compounded at the following period. So we're going to do these for one year. And what I've done at the top is I've given us our formula for compound interest. Our time period will be one year in each case. And we would expect that as we compound it more and more, that the amount of interest would go up. So for example, in our first one, we're compounding it simply for one year, compounded annually, so it's one time. So we have our $1 times 1 plus our rate, which is 100%, so it's just 1. Our n is 1. And uh, we're doing this for one year, so it would just simply be n times t, which is 1 times 1. And we get 1 times 1 plus 1, which is 2. Now, let's say we compounded this 12 times a year, or in other words, monthly. In this case, we get $1 times 1 plus our interest rate of 100%, or 1, divided by 12, raised to the 12 times t power. t is 1, so it's just to the 12th power. And it turns out that comes out to be $2.00. At 0.613 cents. And I'm going to do this to several decimal places so we can kind of see the accuracy. Let's say now we want to compound it not 12 times a year, but 365 days a year, which would be daily. So once again, we get 1 times 1 plus 1 over 365. Raise it 365 times 1 power. One, 365 is the number of compounding periods, and t is equal to 1, so we're doing it for one year. And it turns out we get $2.7146. Certainly is going up. Let's try our next one, one hour. We're going to compound this hourly. Now, if you compound it hourly, that's eight, there's 8,760 8, hours in a year. So we would go 1 times 1 plus 1 over 8,760 raised to the 8,760 times 1 power. And it turns out that ends up being uh, $2.7146. Well, um, you might start noticing a little pattern here. Um, you would have expected to go up dramatically by compounding it every hour, um, but doesn't seem to be. Let's try it every minute. There is 525,600 minutes in a year. So we'll go 1 times 1 plus 1 over 5, 2, 5, 600. So the 5, 2, 5, 600 power, and it turns out this comes out to be $2.7183. Not a very big jump. And we'll do one more time, seconds. Um, if we compound it every second, there's 31,536,000 seconds in a year. So we go 1 times 1 plus 1 over 31 five, three, six, raised to the 31,536,000 power. Getting a little crowded in here. But just to let you know, the answer is $2.7183 rounded off to the nearest uh, 10,000th. You might notice that the, um, uh, it starts reaching a limit the amount of money that you're going to get, which is not what we expected at all. And it turns out that this limit is a special number. And this special number is something we call E. E is, uh, is a number that's approximately 2.718281827, and so on and so forth. It's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal that's used in math a lot. And we can, this is one way of finding the number E. 
Now, I would have expected you to be surprised that compounding yearly or compounding every second is not that big a difference. And um, this, has been, this is a very surprising result. And it turns out this is something we call a limit. And as I said before, the limit is E. So just to summarize this, E is actually the limit as, a no, as the denominator goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power, which is simply what we did. Remember, we kept changing n from uh, uh, annually to monthly with, with 12, or uh, daily, which is 365, and so on and so forth. And once we did that, we got our limit, which was our uh, number e. Now, the, the number e is often used as a base uh, in exponential uh, functions. And the graph of e to x is given to you right here. And it certainly is an exponential growth. And with the domain of this function is all real numbers, and the range is uh, uh, greater than 0. And the horizontal asymptote is the asymptote of the function, just what you would expect. So it turns out that the natural exponential function, which is what we call this function here, f of x equals e to the x, is used to model many phenomena in mathematics. And one of its most important applications is the idea of continuous growth. So uh, here's our formula for continuous growth. And it's very simple. Uh, a function p of t is equal to p, meaning the initial amount. That's what p stands for right here. Uh, times e, which is our continuous growth factor, which is our number e that we talked about, times the ra raised to the rate times the time. So let's do, let's do an example. And here's an example. How much money will you have at the end of three years if you invest $250 in a CD, which pays 4% uh, annual percentage rate compounded continuously? Well, all we do is have our formula here. So we have P of T equals we have our initial amount, which is $250, times E raised to the R, which in our case is 4%, times T, which is our three years. And if you do this on your calculator, you will get $281.8742, which of course we have to round off to the nearest penny. So it'll be $281.87. And that is our answer. $281.87 is our answer. You just simply plug it into the formula. Okay, now it's your turn. Um, take that formula uh, from that we just had previously. If you don't remember it, just rewind this uh, video. And the question is, if you invest $500 in a bank, so there's your initial amount, how much will it be worth in eight years, which is your time, at 8%, which is your rate, compounded continuously? So just use our conti continuous growth formula. You should be able to find the answer. And I hope uh, this has been helpful to you. And See you again.